Hi, I'm Emerald and welcome to my channel. Today we have a little like book vlog. I'm basically gonna go and get some food, walk to a bookstore, walk to a cafe after to read a little bit outside and I wanted to take you guys with me. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about the books that I bought. Without further ado, let's get started. Hi, I'm back. Welcome. So I ended up only buying two books from that last bookstore, but I bought three more on top of that a few days before. But I'll start with the books that I just bought. So I picked up Second Place by Rachel Cusk. She is the author of the Outline Trilogy. You've probably seen these beautiful books with their beautiful covers. And I got recommended this. She seems like one of those poetic sad girl authors and I'll just eat her up. I know she deals with a lot of themes of motherhood and womanhood which I am usually drawn to even though I have no interest in being a mom whatsoever but she just seems up my alley. The synopsis of this book says a woman invites a famous artist to use her guest house in the remote coastal landscape where she lives with her family. Powerfully drawn to his paintings she believes his vision may penetrate the mystery at the center of her life but as a long dry summer sets in his provocative presence itself becomes an enigma and disrupts the calm of her secluded household. And it says that's a haunting fable of art, family, and fate. So this seems right up my alley. And then I also picked up today The Days of Abandonment. And I am extremely excited about this book. This was another one that I saw somewhere. And then I got recommended another book by this author. It's called A Brilliant Friend. And that kind of solidified this book for me. So I actually also picked up the Kindle version of My Brilliant Friend to read along with this guy and I'm super excited. It's translated from, I believe, Italian. Ooh, it opens with a quote and it says, one April afternoon, right after lunch, my husband announced that he wanted to leave me and he did it while clearing the table. So this seems like a very Carver-esque story of just love and marriage and growing up and all of those nice depressing things. So I'm really hopeful for this and excited about it. And it's also short and I feel like it's Gonna introduce me to a new author so excited about this guy and then now that I'm looking down most of the books follow a theme <laughs> Except this one actually. Um, the next book that I got is Address Unknown and I heard nothing about this. It seems really intriguing. It says that this is a novel about the spread of Nazism and it takes place in a series of letters between two friends and it was originally published in Story Magazine in 1983. And it's credited with revealing the dangers of Nazism to American readers early on. World War II was like my Roman Empire. I, as a little kid, was obsessed with World War II and especially historical fiction related to World War II. Like The Book Thief, I've read The Book Thief probably 10 times. Anything about World War II, I would just eat up. I'm definitely excited to read this. I know it's gonna be really sad, so I'm gonna have to wait for the right time, but super interesting book and I want to get more into historical fiction and maybe even some nonfiction eventually and this seems like a nice stepping stone so address unknown and then I also picked up at Barnes and Noble I'm I'm gonna butcher this name bonjour Tristy. Tristesse dumbass 
It says that the author was only 18 when she wrote this and that's a book about a 17 year old who gets sent to a beautiful villa outside of Paris for summer with her father who was a recent widower and his wandering eye and also his latest mistress Elsa. It seems like a coming to age novel and that she's just exploring her sexuality and her freedom and growing up so I'm very excited to read a coming of age novel where the author was that age herself. Even now when I read books about being in your 20s written by 30 year olds or 40 year olds I feel that age gap and I'm excited to read this because hopefully it will be <laughs> more authentic. Yeah super excited about this and this was a recommendation by Dakota Warren on YouTube and I love so many of her books. I wish I had taste as good as hers so I have high hopes for this guy. Finally, I saved this book for last because I can talk about it for like 12 hours straight and that's The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Groff. I'm biased because Lauren Groff is my favorite author. She could spit in a napkin and I would eat it up. This book I am obsessed with. Um, I bought it like two days ago and I'm already almost finished with it. I cannot put it down. I cannot stop thinking of the protagonist of the story and I just think that it explores these themes that she's explored in other novels but in such a beautiful way and for an author who writes so poetically and beautifully for her to write something even more beautiful about themes that she's familiar with is kind of impressive. So when I first read the inside jacket of this book I was kind of like iffy about it. It's historical fiction set in like the original 13 colonies. It is basically just very very anti-colonist and it's anti-church. This whole book takes place pretty much in a forest at night and you're following our character who is a servant girl. I believe she's probably only like 12, 13 as she runs away from one of her colonies or like forts because they have a famine there and everybody's dying during the winter because they don't know how to grow food because they're not from this country. She knows that she is gonna die soon because she's just a servant and she decides to flee instead. First half of the book she's trying to avoid the people from the colony going and getting her because she is an escaped servant and then the rest of it she's trying to find some other people. She knows of the French in the north and the Spaniards in the south and she is trying to just find somebody who can help her or at very least figure it out how to live on her own. While she's alone in the woods, it's basically just her and her memories and like God speaking to her and it is the most beautiful discourse. She is having a hard time figuring out why she's getting punished by God and why she is in so much pain and in so much hardship and it's a lot of ruminating about how she is a servant and she has shown nothing but compassion and love her entire life yet she has such a hard life while her masters and mistress who are both part of the church are greedy and they beat her and they make lives around her horrible and they killed the natives and they are seen as godly even though they aren't. They're really selfish and they're greedy. So it's a lot of these conflicts that happen just kind of existing within Christianity and she's applying it to like this brutal landscape and it's just so good. I don't want to spoil anything that happens in her journey but the ways that she just pokes flaws in Christianity yet sees God as this beautiful guiding light within us. Most of her stories, even though they do speak about God a lot, I always walk away with inner strength that is not attached to God rather than like godly stuff because I'm not religious at all and I don't really think our author is either. Most of her stories are about really strong women who are kind of forced into believing that their power is either wrong or that God God did it and it wasn't them when in reality they're just strong kind compassionate people and that's kind of the conflict that our main character is getting into and I just want to read some passage I never annotate books but all of these little like dog ears are quotes that I saved it's just so beautiful so because she escaped the colony sent somebody out to bring her because she's a servant and she belongs somebody so basically she has a soldier who's trying to pursue her through the forest and it 
it says, And though the girl was nowhere near the soldier when he imagined strangling her to death, something in his thought sent its tendrils through space, and they reached the girl and made the cold shoot upwards from the small of her back through her spine. They caused her to look wild and break into a trot up the incline so that she was walking. For what woman has not, walking in the dark of the street or along a path deep in the countryside, sense the brutal imagings of a man watching her from his hidden place and felt the same chills chasing over her skin and quickened her steps to get away. Like it's just so good. I'm stressed and worried about the character and just proud of her and it's just all about like female instinct and power and how women in the church are told that it's not their responsibility and it's not good for them to do those things. So I highly recommend this. I'm not finished yet. When I am finished, I'm going to do a whole video talking about it because I just love Lauren Groff so much. And yeah, those are all the books I picked up in the last week. The Sun Setting. I've got to go. Um, hopefully you like the little vlog. I'm not very good at it. I just started doing it. And if you guys have any book recommendations based on these, if you guys just want to talk about the books that I got, um, do it in the comments, do it whatever. I just like talking about books. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, evening, wherever you are, and goodbye!